made, you should bait the trap with licorice. <laughs> That's more or less how you spell licorice. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome. I am Dr. Sparks and this is Typewriter Stories. Let's go ahead and get right to it today. I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jet pack and some fuel. Cause we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride with your good friends at your side. Imagination is your guide. Cause it's Sparks, side story, typewriting time. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Dr. Sparks and this is Typewriter Stories. Every single day of the week at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, I lead a celebration of the creativity and storytelling of children. I've got this thing here, it's a typewriter. And together with my guests, we come up with a series of stories that I type up on this guy. And then our incredible illustrator, Cecilia Oliveira Hillway, brings them to life through her incredible illustrations. Now, if you like what you see here today and you'd like your kid to be on a future episode, you can sign up at drsparks.com, where you can also become a Patreon subscriber or throw a tip our way if you like our work and would like to see it continue. Now, today we are also joined by a very special guest, my good friend, the incredible musician and all around raconteur, uh, Stuart Babcock is joining us to read the riddle today. Hey there, Stu. We're excited to have you today. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Stu is Chicago Stu, and he was born on the windiest day that that city had to offer. His mother thought that she was giving birth to twins, but it was just him and his guitar. <laughs> it's a long story, but it's a great story, and I can't wait to share all the stories that we're going to be telling today. Now, my other guest today is Tegan. She's my niece, and she's one of my favorite people in the world. And Tegan. We are right in the middle of an awesome story, aren't we? You see, Tegan was telling me about a necklace that she found the other day in her backyard. This necklace is miraculous. If you put it around your neck, it makes you into a mermaid. And so she wanted a story about her sister and her becoming mermaids, and also the bunny in the yard becoming a mermaid, and also the unicorn that she knows about becoming a mermaid as well. Right, Tegan? So we've got this group of merfolk. <laughs> we've got the mer sisters. We got the mer money. We got mer 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 bunny. <laughs> we got the mer unicorn. And together they are in search of a fabulous treasure. And Tegan, tell me about this treasure. What does it look like? What does it taste like? A strawberry flavor. And what is it? Is it a candy? Licorice. These merfolk love licorice, which is why, if you ever want to catch a mermaid, it's known that you should find an approved trap and then bait it with licorice. They find it irresistible. <laughs> and and um, on the very bottom is the coin that inside you, there's chocolate that you can eat. So not only was this treasure trove of licorice, but there were chocolate coins inside it as well. Who can blame these merfolk for needing to find this fabulous treasure? So off they went in search, right? They swam or hopped or galloped as the case may be. How these animals ambulate is a question for Cecilia to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> they went down to the bottom of the ocean and there was a crab. And Tegan, what did this crab say to them? I hope you don't steal the gold. You stay away from our treasure. What right do you have to be here on the bottom of the ocean? What did they do, Tegan? What did they do to get past the crab? They, they, gr they um, grab his, his head and swing, swing him on the other side of the ocean so they'll never see him ever again. You listen here, you little crab. You're going to the other side of the ocean whether you like it or not. And then they threw the crab all the way over that way. <laughs> and on they continued in search of the fabulous licorice treasure. Where did you get that 
crab. <laughs> Do you want to know? My good friend Matt made this crab as part of an undersea adventure he was working on. And I thought I would repurpose it for this story. It's perfect though, isn't it? I will keep him right there. Can he stay here? <laughs> All right. So what happened next? They continued on after they had run into this crab. And what was the next animal that they met? Was there another animal? They found the treasure next? Was it next? It was in the clam. Oh, they found a clam. Who goes there? That's my clam voice. How, is that a good clam voice? Instead of the pearl inside is the licorice. <laughs> I am a clam and inside of me is licorice and gold coins. Now, I don't know if you know this, but clams don't like having oysters. You see, oysters are an irritation in our mouths, and we want nothing more than for someone to take the oyster away from us. So you Murr family, please remove this licorice from my mouth. I am tormented by the licorice and the gold coins, and all I want is for someone to take them. And what did the Murr people do? Did they help the clam out? They swam in there, and they got themselves their pearls and the other treasures, the other, uh, uh, that's a, that's a, <laughs> and they got all the treasures out of the clam now. And the clam was so grateful and said, thank you so much. And did they feast on the licorice and gold coins? And, Tegan, when merfolk are happy, they sing a song, don't they? What kind of song do they sing, do you think? Funny song. A funny song, maybe like, here on the bottom of the sea, we found the things that mean so much to me. We met a clam, and it was there, and then we had to swim like a bear. <laughs> Something like that. They sang like that for 13 hours as the moon rose above them, as the moon kept rising above them, shifting phases from waxing to waning to new. And every creature in the ocean knew that the merfolk had succeeded and they were so happy to have been witness to their adventure. And I think that is the end of our story. What do you think, Tegan? So what do I do? Do I, do I write the end down here at the bottom? Yeah. The end. And Tegan, Cecilia has made an incredible illustration for this story. Look at that bunny's tail. <laughs> but the thing we're missing is a title. What do we add to the top of this story, Tegan? What's the story called? The Mermaid Story. The Mermaid Story. Let's do it. The Mermaid Story. That is a great title for that story. And so, Tegan, you know what happens next, don't you? Uh-huh. What happens? Tell me. You, send, <coughs> you put it in the mailbox and then you send it to me? You bet I do. What I've got here is your story and an envelope with your name on it and your sister's name on it, too. I'm going to fold your story into thirds very carefully. I'm going to tuck it into this envelope right here. Make sure that it's nice and sealed. And then put it into the mailbox so that the mailman knows to come and get your letter. And Tegan, will you help me with the noises for this next part? Chunk, chunk, chunk. And the mail truck will carry that letter all the way to you. <laughs> now, for those of you who are watching at home, we have something very special for you today. If you comment on this video in any way, I actually have a special typewriter type rigged up right now that will physically type out any comments on this video. So please, comment right away. But if you are watching, I also have a reason for you to comment. You see, every day of the week when we do this show, we pick a riddle. And our riddle reader today is Chicago Stu. That fellow from the Windy City, he's an incredible musician and he's a great riddle writer as well. And he's going to be sharing that riddle for you at home now as well. 
So if you are watching, please try to answer Stu's riddle. If you can leave the answer in the comments, if you get it right, something crazy happens to me. Stu, take it away. All right, here we go, everybody. I fly and flit from thing to thing so you can see my colored wings. You spread my namesake on your toast. From caterpillars, I arose. What am I? Oh, oh it's a good one. It's a very good one. Tegan knows the answer. Don't give it away, Tegan, but it's a really good riddle. Tegan, do you know, Stu plays every instrument I can imagine and many that I can't as well. Seriously, one time I saw him play the dulcimer, which I didn't even know what that was until he started playing it. Have you ever heard of the dulcimer? <laughs> Me neither. Stu, is there any instrument you don't play? Well, uh, I can't play the tuba. <laughs> I wish I could. Tegan, can you play the tuba? I can pretend to play the tuba. That's what it sounds like to me, I think. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so, Stu, you are also uh, a musician in a very uh, 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 literal way, right? <laughs> I guess that's a yes. weird thing to say. But you have a band is what I'm trying to get out of here, right? Yes, that's right. What is, what is the name of your band? Uh, so my band is called Jake Swamp and the Pine. Um, it is named after the tallest tree in Massachusetts, the Jake Swamp Pine Tree. And uh, yeah, as the uh, our website just appeared above my head, Jake <laughs> uh, you can check it out if you want to listen to some some nice folk tunes. It's really lovely music. I'll vouch for Stu. It's absolutely wonderful. All right, now back to our story. Oh, actually, Tegan, before we get underway. I have a very special word of the day today. Uh, have you ever heard of this word before? Splendor is the word. Do you know what that word means, Tegan? No. It's something that's awesome or magnificent or beautiful. I don't even know what that is. What, awesome or magnificent or beautiful? Yeah. How about it's really, really great? So if you were to look out on all the mermaids in the ocean, if they were gathered before you and singing the most wonderful song each to each, if you could see them combing the wind as it blew the water white and black, if you were sitting there on the shore wearing your trousers and eating a peach, and you all of a sudden dropped the peach because the mermaids were singing to you, you'd be overwhelmed with the splendor of the ocean. So if you can find a way to use that word in your next story, that'd be pretty great. But actually, Tegan, is Piper gonna write this next story or are you gonna write this next story? Piper. All right. Piper, you want to write this story? It's you're up. Piper is our second guest today. She's Tegan's sister, and she is a great storyteller. <laughs> Piper, what kind of story do you want today? We got, you know, I've got 30 keys here. We can press them in any number of combinations. We already had this crab be featured, uh, and we've got this fun lantern, too. It's very red. <laughs> what kind of story do you want today? You have one in mind? It's going to be one of our Beanie Boos. It's like a type of stuffed animal that comes with a birthday and a name. Oh, wow. What was the name of the stuffed animal again? A Beanie Boo. A Beanie Boo. Okay. All right. And what's this Beanie Boo's name? Um, so I have a couple of different ones. Oh, wow. I have one name is Harmony with double horns. <laughs> it's a unicorn. You can't have a unicorn, like the name means one horn. If you have a, two unicorn horns, I think you become like a moose at that point. I, I don't know, Cecilia, what is the, uh, do you know what you call a unicorn with two horns? A bicorn? A bicorn, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, okay, so we've got the two unicorn horn one. Well, let's, let's pick one to write a story about. And Piper, it, this, let's come up with a crazy story. What happens with these animals? So all the beanie boos are going to go to a fair. Oh, okay. The beanie boos were going to the fair. For it was the, oh, heavens. Hey, look at that. Your mom just made a message on the Facebook page. She said, we love Dr. Sparks. And then our fancy typewriter over there actually typed it up so that you can see it live. Uh, <laughs> uh, your mom should do that again because that was really cool. <laughs> I'll keep it up. 
All right. Um, okay. So uh, the Beanie Boos were going to the fair for it was the yeah. greatest fair in all the land. And they knew they would have to travel far for between them and the fair were many treacherous things. Do you know what the word treacherous means, Piper? No. It means like really scary or difficult or dangerous. So there were many dangerous things in front of them. What lie between the Beanie Boos and the fair that they want to go to? What sort of obstacles? There was the big street. And it's not only a random kind of street, filled with strangers, and it was totally a highway. There was a big street, a highway, in fact, that was filled with strangers. Ooh, this is so good, Piper. This is awesome. What else? What else is in between them? There is a big field of flowers. Oh, look, we're getting another comment here. <laughs> oh, Brooke Nelson on Facebook says they are looking up the music of Jake Swamp and the Pine, and they're excited to hear it. <laughs> Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> OK, uh, so uh, sorry, Piper, I got distracted by my new invention. What, what did you say? Um, so there's a big field that has, has lots of flowers. And, and people are making tons of uh, spots. Well, there's tons of um, lawnmowers that are making little mazes part. And there's and some of them have big holes. And the one that they need to get across is really zigzaggy. And it has a huge, ginormous hole that they have to jump across. And, and the maze is, is, is cutting down, then going up. Cutting down, then going up. So what? there's no way they're, they're going to be able to get across that. It's okay. going to take magic to get across that. My heavens, this is crazy, Piper. This is such a great... Okay, so I'm envisioning this. You've got this beautiful field filled with flowers, and there's all these people. They're all driving lawnmowers, cutting mazes out of it. But these aren't just, like, little mazes you could walk through. They're big mazes with big walls and lots of obstacles, like this blade thing that keeps going up and down and up and down, and it's just slicing and dicing the air in front of them. How do they get through it, Piper? I... How? Um, they use magic. So the bunny has super speed. Ah. This, this one, the double unicorn horn, is, um, can, um, has the power to make two things of one. So, like, if you had a trampoline, she could make two. Um, if there was one of them and you wanted two of them, then she could make that possible. Oh, that's wild. Okay. So it makes sense because she's got two horns. She can make two out of anything that you have one of. It makes perfect sense. Let's check in with Cecilia and see what she's drawing for this particular story. Cecilia, so tell us about I, it. I, I'm just doing the, the beanie boos, they're called. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm thinking in front of them, there's going to be the road, and maybe I'll make uh, the maze behind them. Ooh, Piper, what do you think? Cecilia is so talented. This is great. OK, so we've got these superpowers. Bunny is super fast. Uh, Bicorn can make two things out of anything. What was, what was the third animal? So there's four animals. Oh, four. I'm sorry. So there's a cheetah with a horn. The cheetah with a horn can grant wishes. Whoa! Well, can they just cheat and say, we wish that the, the thing would stop or we were through it? <laughs> well, it takes all of their powers to get one wish to come out of her. And, and she can only grant one wish a day. So that's really tricky of what they have to decide. Yeah. And they yeah. can only have a few words in it. That makes sense. So they're probably really regretting that they wished for a big breakfast of licorice and bacon, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when you waste your wish on the one thing. OK, so we've got super speed. We've got uh, doubling anything, 
and we've got making a wish, but that power is not able to be used because it's so rare and it takes so much energy out of the cheetah with the horn. Who's number four? Huh? Well, who's the fourth animal? Um, it's this little unicorn, and it can make any color appear. Like, maybe it can make a new color up. A, it can make a new color up? A color that's never been seen before? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you think it would be possible? So maybe this like blade thing that keeps going up and down, maybe they make the, 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 the sky, they make the sky its favorite color. And the blade thing just looks up to look at it. And then they make two skies because bicorn can make two out of anything. So now there's two skies and they're exactly the color that the blade likes. And while the blade is trying to wrap its head around the fact that there are now two skies and the skies are a very special color, they run in through the open blade. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And they run in super fast with the super speed of the cheetah. But, but every single time it closes, it makes a big wide hole. And then one of them fall down in the one with super speed. Oh, no. What are they going to do? How do they get the super speed bunny out? Um, they don't. They don't. The bunny's trapped down there forever. Sorry, Bunny, but we gotta go on our adventure. We can't, we can't spare the time to help you. No, because I love each other like a family. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I didn't think they should actually leave the Bunny. I'm glad that you're saving the Bunny in this story. So, okay, so do they make a, do they make a ladder, perhaps? Or a human chain, or a, 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 a unicorn chain, I guess, in this case. Like, do they hold on to each other's ankles so that, that the, the, the bunny can climb up their heels and up them up to the top? They tried all of that, but none of it worked because they weren't tall enough. So then she tried using her powers to see if she could make two bunnies, but guess what? She missed and it made two holes? Yeah, <laughs> with, two bunnies, with two bunnies in it. <laughs> You gotta be really careful with that duplicating spell. It's just, it's gonna go wild every time, you know? <laughs> okay, so now there's, there's, there's two bunnies. So do they make an extra friend? Like, <laughs> what are they gonna do with the spare, the clone bunny? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe they can invite the spare bunny along. I mean, it'll be good to have a super speed, two super speedy bunnies, right? Maybe they can like, uh, I don't know, like hold a rope between them and then they can like run around the legs of somebody and trip them or something. Yeah. So how do they rescue, they now have two bunnies in two holes. How are you gonna get the bunnies out? A catapult might work, a jetpack might work. I'm brainstorming here. Maybe they get a frog that's very helpful to jump down and jump back out. A little light bulb popped out of this one's head, and 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 then she made um in the sky her rainbow, and this one did its trick again. That's making their, but this time it did a four sky. There were four <laughs> skies. Every direction you look, it was sky, sky up, sky down, sky right, sky left sky all around that what would be what would happen if you lived in a space station out in out in space right i mean there would just be sky everywhere yeah okay so now there's sky all around them and is that helpful <laughs> i guess yeah. they're not in a hole anymore because then the holes get a little happier then it moves up so then they are be able um to um get go down uh -uh. And they're and then they're holding on to each other, um. So, and, and they could reach the bunny, and and they got the bunny out. Oh, how wonderful! So I, I mean, perfect. That, that's. I feel like I learned something important here today, Piper. And that's if you ever fall into a big hole, one of the things that you can do is cheer up the hole. Say something really nice to the hole. Like, oh, you're so deep, you know? Do you know that? You're just the deepest, most wonderful hole. And if you make the hole happy, it will get shorter, won't get quite as deep. Mm -hmm. And then you can call upon your friends to make a human body ladder 
And between friendship, so all around, kindness and friendship is going to get you out of any, any fix. And here's a classic example of it. If you are kind to the whole, it's going to become smaller. And if you have friends, they're going to make a human ladder to get you out of it. Kindness and friendship can solve any problem out there. I feel like that illustrates the point beautifully, Piper. I really like this story. Mm-hmm. And they finally make it to the, um, they finally make it to the fair, but in the fair, and, and, and the unicorn with two horns, um, went on the seesaw with this one, and then, and then the, the this one, um, went to the big fair wheel, and uh -huh. then this one went to go buy some popcorn to watch a movie. Oh, that's wonderful. I wonder, once they did everything in the fair, they'd gone to all the rides, they'd eaten all the popcorn, they'd found the licorice, they'd shook hands with the mermaid, they'd shook hands with the mayor, done everything the fair had to offer, and they were at last bored with the fair? I wonder, do you think that they could use the bicorn's powers to make a new fair? <laughs> yeah! So this fair never ends. They go on to the next fair. And from there, a next fair. The road goes on forever. The fairs never need to end. Cecilia, let's check in with what you're working on for this story. <laughs> so I have uh, the four original um, mini booths, although maybe I'll draw the other bunny, the extra bunny that you had um, over here. And I have a sort of maze and the hole. Oh. <laughs> That, that, that does look like perfect. a very nice hole. What'd you say, Piper? That's perfect. All right. So is that the end of the story, do you think? We just leave our heroes on a perpetual loop where they're going to one fair, and then as soon as the fair is done, it's duplicated, made new, and they go to that fair. And then when that fair is done, they duplicate it, make yeah. new. It's an yeah. endless cycle of fair going. And that's the end, although it's not really an end. It's kind of a cyclical thing. Mm -hmm. Should I write so, the end or until tomorrow? What should I, what's the last line of the story? How do I end it? They, they live happily ever after all, and there's, but, and there's going to be more stories that come from me about the Beanie Boos. They lived happily ever after, but not so happily that they never went on any more adventures. Because, you know, sometimes really, really happy lives are kind of boring. It's much more interesting and worthy of telling stories whenever some bad things happen and they have to overcome adversity. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you agree. Okay, so they live happily ever after, but not so happily. They never went on any more adventures. Should I still add the end, even though it's kind of an open-ended story? Okay, I won't, but it does need a title. So we've got this illustration, and we've got the story all written out, but what does this story, what is this story called, Piper? The Beanie Boo Superheroes. The Beanie Boo's Superheroes. Heroes. Ooh, that's great. That is a good title for that story. All right, and then you know what happens next, Piper. I've got to mail this story to you, right? Yep. Will you help me make the mail truck noises this time? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to stamp your story with this number. 2022. Wow, I've been writing stories for a long time. <laughs> I'm going to carefully fold your story into thirds. I've got an envelope with your name on it. Would you like an astronaut sticker or a moon stamp? Um... Uh... A moon stamp. Good call. So then I will tuck that in the envelope. And now, help me out, Piper. Chunk, chunk, chunk. That was great. That was so wonderful, Piper. That was a great story. These beanie boos, they're going places, I can tell. I mean, there's going to be lots of adventures with them in the future. We'll have to tell them all. Mm-hmm. Piper, I want to thank you. You are an incredible riddle reader. And, oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. Stu, somebody 
has potentially answered the riddle. Piper, uh, we've got Rachel on Twitch thinks the answer to Stu's riddle was butterfly. Is that right? Yep. That was the answer? Yeah. What does that mean? Um, something comes falls down on your head. Does anyone know? Uh, I don't know. Stu, do you know? Do I know what falls on your head? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'm really hoping that it's bananas. Bananas? It's not, it's yeah. not bananas. What, bananas? Oh! <laughs> bananas! <laughs> great job. Great job, Rachel on Twitch. And uh, great job, <laughs> Stu, for coming up with such a wonderful riddle. Guys, this was absolutely terrific. I loved telling these stories today. Thank you, Piper. You're an incredible storyteller. Your sister, if she's there, she's incredible too. A mer bunny? I've never even heard of that before. And I love that we, we found a way to incorporate each of these animals' superpowers. That was just absolutely, really inspired, I thought. And Stu, thank you so much for coming up with such a great riddle. That was perfect. And for those of you who are watching at home, if you want to check out his music, jakeswamp.com is the place where you can do it. I have listened to it. It's awesome, and the newest music video actually incorporates a huge cardboard cutout of Ralph Waldo Emerson, which is terrific. Or is it Thoreau? That's true. <laughs> Cecilia is our illustrator. Thank you, Cecilia, for bringing these things to life. You're incredible. Our You're producer is Matt Chilbert, and this is an Anything Place show. I'm Dr. Sparks, and this is Typewriter Stories. If you liked what you saw today, you can go to drsparks.com to sign your kid up for a future episode or become a Patreon subscriber or throw a tipper away. And I'd like to leave you with this thought, that words have power, and by telling stories, we change the world. Until tomorrow, well, until Monday, because it's Friday, and we only do this Monday to Friday. Until Monday at 4 p.m., I'm Dr. Sparks, and we'll see you then.